that's a segue. We're, we're preparing, we're working right now on the definitive valuation guide to, to XRP. And we've got all of our different methodologies that were used, some that we're, you know, we're expanding on. And uh, we're, we're going to publish that uh, uh, hopefully here in the next couple of months. Um, and it will be available to be downloaded for, get this, either 10 US dollars or one XRP. Oh, there we go. Yeah. We need to have like a, 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 you know, basically like an annual stockholders meeting of a public company. We need to have an XRP token holders meeting and see if we can come up with like a, a platform about, you know, the, the things that, that this group of people wants to see and how we want to see the asset used and that type of a thing. And maybe even we commit to each other that that's, that's the value we're committed to and that's the way it's going to be used. And, um, you yeah. know, nobody's coming to save us, I guess is the point. So we might as well start, uh, might as well start just doing it ourselves. The XRP ledger is decentralized because no organization or individual has any legal right or ability to control it. Every participant enforces every single rule and the system is governed by all of its participants. Ripple's an unregistered security. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. It's a company, right? Just like Ethereum is an unregistered security. Yeah, I think I think the best thing for the world would be with the, if the SEC pretty much shut down all of it. So the original, the XRP ledger is, like I said, it's, it's decentralized and its entire point right. is point to point, peer to peer uh, payments without needing a central authority. So exactly the same use case as Bitcoin. It was originally developed by a trio of block of uh, Bitcoin developers who were after something more environmentally friendly than Bitcoin. They understood that the energy usage that the proof of work protocol used was not necessarily sustainable. And so they looked to find a consensus algorithm that still retained the decentralized nature and the peer to peer nature of Bitcoin, but without the uh, energy consumption that Bitcoin requires. So kind of fast forward to today. And XRP is one of the most widely supported uh, cryptocurrencies on a whole number of exchanges worldwide. And the XRP ledger is uh, being used uh, for many different uh, use cases, predominantly around payments and moving value around, but also moving into other areas such as NFTs uh, and tokenization. One of the things people may not realize is that the XRP ledger was the first blockchain to have a decentralized exchange built into the, the ledger and was the first blockchain to allow the tokenization of other assets. In my uh, non-legal uh, opinion, uh, cr broke all types of security laws. Uh, I consider Ripple a security of the, the Ripple Corporation. It is not a cryptocurrency. It has nothing to do with the cryptocurrency. It is not decentralized by any means. Why do you love XRP over every other crypto? Mostly because of the way the technology is set up. Um, uh, from the perspective of a, 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 a hobby web developer or even a serious team of developers trying to develop uh, real world, world applications for consumers or small businesses, I think the, a, f a few things are really important for, for both the developers and the users. It needs to be fast, it needs to be cheap, it needs to be easy to implement the technology in apps but in, also in browsers. Let's play devil's advocate here. Let's say that. Ripple ends up being a horrible company and they go under or something. Would that change your mind about XRP, the cryptocurrency? No, not not, not the well the, the cryptocurrency. I mean, it's just a name for for a token on 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 a piece of technology software. But uh, so for me, it's about the 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 well the the network, like a decentralized network, the way it operates, uh, uh, how you can run your own server, the the code that lets you run a server. And uh, well, even if, if Ripple would disappear tomorrow, uh, I believe we would still be able to keep the network running and all the advantages like, like price, security, uh, uh, speed, uh, uh, stuff like that would, would, would still be there. But no, for me personally, nothing would change. I, think, I still think our technology can be used for, for many, many different things uh, and, and, and it would really uh, solve uh, real life, real world, world problems. Uh, you don't need a currency in the middle in your currency conversions. If you are converting your U.S. dollars to uh, 
uh, say the Filipino peso, which is a big uh, remittance corridor, you don't need a crazy made up token in the middle. I can throw a Bitcoin in less than a second and for free into Nigeria. And so what I could do is tell customers, hey, how many dollars do you want to get into Nigeria? And I say, take the dollars and say, okay, I'm going to turn it into Bitcoin. I'm going to throw it, my five foot eight self, all the way into Nigeria where a local partner is going to receive it, convert it to Naira and put it in a bank. And if we just do a little bit of work, on exchange rates and just making sure that the software is congruent across, then you've just reinvented cross-border payments. So why yeah. would you hold Bitcoin? Because it's scarce. Why would you use it? Because never before have you been able to have physical settlement digitally. Mind blowing. If the thrust is that we just need to ban crypto. And, and, <laughs> it, and it's set forth, here's all the reasons. I think about everything that you've set up with, with blockchain and, and DeFi and, and and how this uh, can really effectively replace a lot of existing systems like SWIFT or whatever, and it really works well. Do you think that, I mean, what do you make of, of someone that makes that case, given all the blockchain infrastructure and everything else, not just around Bitcoin, but do you think that this toothpaste ever goes back in the tube like that because you can use it for ransomware? Not sure I've heard the toothpaste analogy before. I'm going to steal that one myself. Look, first of all, thank you for having me. I think the question you're asking is a really important one. And I think it gets to the kind of core of sometimes just a misunderstanding about how these technologies can be applied in a way that actually is really good for businesses, for citizens, for, for just the community at large. And so when we talk about, like, should we ban something, let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. The way Ripple uses these technologies, as you introduced, is we can make cross-border payments, which are slow and expensive today, we can make them real time, very efficient, very low cost. And that's good for the global economy. We can unlock trillions of dollars of kind of trapped capital to make the economy more efficient. And so blockchain technologies can be applied in a lot of really constructive ways that's reducing friction, whether that be transaction cost, transaction speed. But again, for Ripple, that's around payments. But you know, I think to say, hey, let's just ban all this. Yes, the, the toothpaste might already be out. Uh, and I don't know how you get it back in. In other countries, you have seen in the UK, Japan, Switzerland, Singapore, I mean, these are you know, G20 markets where they have invested the time and energy, either through legislation or rulemaking, to provide that clarity and that certainty. And that allows investors to participate, that allows entrepreneurs to build, that allows people to build companies that make the CNBC disruptor list. So here in the United States, we haven't had that clarity. I think, uh, you know, just to correct something you said, Ripple actually doesn't control XRP. XRP is an open source technology, very analogous to Bitcoin. In contrast, XRP is very efficient in terms of speed of transaction. Very, it is a carbon neutral blockchain. So these are all examples of, of it being more efficient. But all of the XRP that has ever been created has already been created. So it's a zero inflation dynamic. But the core of what you're talking about around regulation, I think, is what we're experiencing here in the U.S. with the SEC. The SEC is making the assertion that these are investment contracts, that Ripple's sales of XRP to our customers is actually an investment contract. And, you know, it, 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 a security is something where you, if when you buy it, you own part of a company. You have a, a right to the, the profits. You can vote on the, the board of directors of that company. Uh, all of those things that are, you know, certainly CNBC covers in depth. That isn't true with XRP. You know, if you buy XRP, you you don't have uh, a, a ownership of Ripple. And I mean, ironically, you actually have XRP owners who have tried to right. sue the SEC for even bringing the case. For